Hey guys, what's up? Guys, you've seen today's video. We're going to use RAM as the machine storage disk. As fast as it gets, it's going to be an SSD. We're going to be able to install a game here in the memory, a program here, or save anything here. And the difference is that things will be much faster. Look, here I am capturing the PC screen, and there's this little program here. This yellow goat and soft perfect RAM disk is its name. That's all it is, RAM disk. Disk application is easy to use. The main window shows all the mounted RAM disks and features controls for adding or removing disks, working with image files and accessing the application settings. The dialog box named Add Disk allows you to specify various disk parameters. E this screenshot shows how RAM disks appear in Windows Explorer. Modern computers are equipped with many gigabytes of RAM, and, more often than not, there is a lot of unused memory that could be used as high-performance alternative to slower traditional disk storage. This application allows you to create any number of virtual RAM disks, limited only by the available memory. You can also work with disk images and RAM disks associated with disk files to preserve your data between sessions. In this case, I have a total of 32 gigabytes on my PC right now. I've already done a simulation of 16 gigabytes, which is already set up here. So there's still enough available to make another RAM disk. So I just have to select how many megabytes you want to allocate, and that's it. Then you choose the drive letter, which is similar to that of our operating system, and put it in to confirm that it will already be available for use. When you put OK here to confirm, the drive will already be here for our devices and drives. It is precisely 16 gigabytes of RAM that is being used as a solid drive. What have I done here to test it? I've installed a game here, guys, and we'll see what differences that game would have. And it's installed in RAM, directly in RAM. The game isn't on a conventional disk. The normal hierarchy we have based on the von Neumann architecture that popularized the concept of stored programs, making computers more flexible and easier to reprogram. This design stores data and instructions in the same memory, simplify hardware design and enabling general purpose computing. And another thing to remember, RAM is volatile. In other words, when you turn off the PC, everything inside the memory is erased. It's not able to store files when it's turned off. When it's turned off, there's no more power in it. And that's the point. When I turn off the PC now, the game I've installed here on this memory partition will be lost. So I'd have to install it again. And the game I downloaded was Resident Evil 3, but the demo-eyed version because of space and the idea was to compare the performance of the RAM disk and the NVN SSD disk. Right, so here we go. I also did a direct comparison in a device speed measurement program. I did a side-by-side -side gameplay comparison. I was running to see if there would be any variation, fluctuation in FPS or in the use of any system resources. I think all that's uh, left now is to show the game running, as I've already shown the others. I also made a comparison inside the game by clicking to start the gameplay to see if the loading time would change or not. And I've already shown that because I'm editing at different times. I've already shown you the startup time, which is when I was already in the game menu, and I clicked to start the gameplay, and everything was the same. And the read and write test between the discs is showing, or has already shown, and the difference is almost double, with the RAM disc being much faster. Does it make a difference to the frames in the game? You saw, my, uh, let's go. The gameplay is already here. I did this little run here. You can see the average frames. And at the end of the results, you'll see average FAPs. 1% was the same. Now, in terms of PC resources, right? GPU, processor, memory, RAM. Is there any variation? That's what we're seeing. The SSD disk is on the left, and the RAM disk is on the right of the screen. Up there, starting with GPU, in the case of the EQSD, the use of the video card, 
which is a GTS tent. NAT Santa 80 in this test was 98%. In RAM disk, with the game installed in RAM, same thing. Video memory consumption changed somewhat. In the case of the SSD, the 1080 was using 2. 9 gigabytes. Situation of a few hundred megabytes in GPU of RAM savings. Sometimes there was a very large variation in CPU usage, 40% in the case of RAM disk, and on the SSD, only 27%. The consumption of the two components is very similar. The processor consumed 43 watts and the video card, 170 watts or a little more. Now, what matters most, right? Because that's what we're using. That memory is being used to run the game and to store the game. And we have in the case of the SSD. The first piece of data is memory usage, which is more or less 22 gigabytes. Memory usage is a little higher, but I've also included the use of committed load, which is the second figure. This committed load is the real memory used together with the Windows paging file. This is the virtual RAM that the operating system file stores on the SSD. And look how interesting that is. Using NVMe, you can see that the paging file is bigger because the overall consumption is higher. It was 29. 3 gigabytes or so. With the game in RAM, the paging file is even smaller. And this total committed load is 28, 9 gigabytes. So that paging file has been reduced. Interesting, right? And in the course of this, we'll see that what really varies are these uses of memory. GPU memory, the first one in green, and then RAM. Because it's the RAM that's playing catch up with the game. But the total RAM file has always been higher, has always been higher. In the case of the SSD, and RAM consumption has also always been higher for SSDs. Quite different, I thought. So guys, that was our test for today. The RAM that became the SSD right, I found it interesting. But it's a shame that in relation to the high-speed NVMe, as we had it here to test, it didn't fluctuate much, right? In loading time, even, I thought it would be more varied. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, don't forget to give it a like. It's really easy. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.